Yo, what's going on everyone? Mike Hill, the Wholesaling Titan here. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about proof of funds. So proof of funds can be one of the biggest obstacles to doing wholesale and real estate deals, especially if you are a beginning wholesaler. So in this video, we're going to touch very briefly on what a proof of funds is and why you need it. Then I'll show you some different types of proof of funds letters. We'll discuss the pros and cons of each. And I'll give you my personal recommendations, including my newest, highest converting recommendation, which is free. Um, and then most importantly, I'm going to show you how to use these letters, like when to send them and how to increase your conversion rate in terms of getting more offers accepted. So you're going to want to stick around until the end of the video, because it's not just about having the letter. It's also about how you use it. So like if you've never been to the gym before and someone hands you a barbell, well, like that's good to have the tool. It's better than nothing. But if someone shows you how to use it, how to do the proper exercises, it's going to be far more effective. But before we get into it, just a quick reminder that each week I still have limited spaces available for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me showing you how to do your next deal in four to six weeks, even if you don't have cash or credit. I'll leave a link in the description for more details. So let's get into the video. Return proof of funds, pretty self-explanatory. It simply means that you are proving you have the funds to close on a property that you're making an offer on. So let's see, say you're a beginning wholesaler and you're making an offer on a property in the amount of $200,000, but you don't have 200 G's in the bank. First, you got to realize that that's okay. You don't need to show that you have that amount sitting in your bank account. You simply need to demonstrate that you have access to that money. This you know, it's basically rich dad, poor dad, one-on-one. Uh, in reality, that is what most of my end cash buyers do. Use other people's money. Uh, most of my cash buyers, you know, rehabbers and many real estate investors, they use private loans or hard money loans to finance their real estate investments. So if you are a new wholesaler and you don't have that money, you're going to want to use what's called a proof of funds letter. So next, next question I get asked is like, well, Mike, you know, I'm making cash offers but is a proof of funds letter, is that the same thing? Same as, you know, buying cash? Well, no, it's not. Um, it's basically a pre-qualification letter for a hard money loan. But for our purposes as wholesalers, that really doesn't matter. And we'll get to why in just a moment. Uh, but that being said, I know I'm going to catch some flack for saying that. And for some of the things I'm going to mention in this video, like if you check out biggerpockets.com, you know, the forum, you're going to see tons of posts about why you shouldn't use proof of funds letters as a wholesaler why you can't write a cash offer using proof of funds letters, why they don't or shouldn't work. But man, just don't listen to the naysayers. Here's what you need to understand. The only real proof of funds letter that's going to be accepted 100% of the time is basically going to be a bank statement in your name or in your business name. But in this business, especially as a beginning wholesaler, you don't need to be looking for foolproof strategies that work 100% of the time. Instead, you need to start with where you are with whatever resources you have at your disposal, do a few deals. And yes, the first few will typically be harder because you'll have more obstacles, more scrutiny, less resources, less experiences. You're going to get more rejections. But once you get a few deals under your belt, it becomes much easier. So I'm saying that to kind of impress upon you that you don't necessarily want to be using these strategies forever, but use these strategies to get some wholesale deals done right now. Uh, you know, I often make that analogy that aspects of wholesaling are like video games. And yes, you know, I'm a nerd, right? But when you first start, you have limited powers, limited resources, limited money. Like if you play Grand Theft Auto, you get off the boat, you have no money. You have to work your way up before you can get access to the advanced missions. If you're playing uh, RPGs like Legend of Zelda, you start with the wooden sword and the wooden shield and you can't face the final boss until you get your diamond sword. Same thing here. Certain types of deals simply won't work with some of these letters and strategies I'm going to show you. And I'll show you which ones in just a second. We'll talk about it. But just don't focus on those. Instead, focus on the deals that you can do. And with every deal done, you get more resources, more money, more experience. And that's going to allow you to do more and different types of deals. So there are a few different types of letters you can use. Some are free and some are paid. Uh, some you can grab instantly and some take you know, a little bit of sweat equity, a little bit of work, a little effort to get. Um, and the first one I want to talk about is a free letter that you can download from besttransactionfunding.com. Very basic proof of funds letter that just says you have funds available to close on a property. Uh, you can use this letter if you're dealing directly with a homeowner and they request a proof of funds letter. And note that many of these people will not. 
And I would not recommend sending this letter unless you're asked for it, simply because you might confuse your seller. Like remember, your average motivated seller, most likely they're not familiar with wholesaling or real estate investing. And the incongruency between offering cash and then providing a letter that talks about a loan could cause confusion. Now, if you're dealing with a more knowledgeable seller and especially a real estate agent, this type of letter can kind of cause red flags only because it's been so popularized as a go-to source for wholesalers. Um, this letter itself is free, but it does not include any type of verification, meaning it does not include a bank statement. And if a seller or agent calls to verify the funds, you have to pre-arrange for verification, which is an add-on service that costs you about, I think it's $150 a month. So I don't recommend this as an ideal choice, but I wanted to address it because many resources out there kind of recommend it. Uh, I'd say if you're dealing with listed properties in particular, this might be accepted, you know, 40 to 60% of the time. Uh, and whether or not your approved funds letter is accepted is at the discretion of the seller or person representing the transaction. Again, certain deals that this letter most likely will not work for, and I'll be discussing those in just a second. Uh, so let's talk about your next option, which is only marginally better, uh, Kogo Capital. So this is a proof of funds letter, and they will provide verification over the phone if the seller or agent requests it. Uh, the downside to these letters is that you do have to pay for each letter individually. They cost $10 per letter, or you can get a discount if you buy in bulk. Um, so again, not ideal for doing bulk offers. Uh, and not an ideal choice, but I wanted to touch on it again because it's a popular option. You'll probably hear about it if you look this stuff up. But let's go ahead and talk about my top two preferred options. So the first is a proof of funds letter from getpof.com. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description. Uh, this site's ideal because they not only give you a proof of funds letter, but they also provide an actual bank statement, which is updated every month and you can submit with your offers. Now remember, no option here is going to be 100%. But because you're submitting a letter with an actual bank statement, these letters tend to convert a lot better. So I'd say on listed properties, again, as an example, these letters might convert, you know, 75, 80% of the time, as opposed to the previously mentioned letters, which is like, you know, 40 to 60% of the time. Uh, cost for this is $97 a month for unlimited letters. And they also offer discounts if you purchase a six month or an annual plan. And the great thing about this letter is you can just go to the site, purchase and start using it right now. Um, but now it's time for my number one choice for a proof of funds letter. And the great thing, again, is that this is essentially free, but it does take a little bit of work. So what you want to do is find a hard money lender and preferably a local hard money lender. And the best way to do this is to simply ask for a referral. So start with your local RIA group and ask the president, organizer, or head of the group. Uh, you can also join RIA groups and virtual real estate investing groups in your market on Facebook. And start by asking the admins or other active real estate investors in, the, in those groups for suggestions. Uh, in addition, you can ask your local investor-friendly title company for recommendations. And just do some Google searching. Uh, check for reviews. You're going to be looking for quantity and quality here. And then you want to... Give them a call and just ask for a proof of funds letter. But you don't just flat out ask, right? You need to start, you need to build a relationship. And this doesn't have to take a ton of time, by the way. It's like I teach my students, right? If you want something from someone, the best way to get it is to put your desires to the side for a moment and ask, how can I make this proposition work in this other person's best interest? And here's how you do it. Like, remember, these guys make money from lending. So you want to call and introduce yourself, let them know that you're a wholesaler and you are actively marketing and making offers on real estate deals every day. And you got to kind of really sell it, right? And let them know you have buyers who are looking for capital and you would love to offer your deals with financing by sending buyers to that lender. Then explain that in order to secure some of your deals, you need to show proof of funds and ask if they would be willing to provide you with a proof of funds letter, which should include a bank statement. So the proof of funds letter costs them nothing to give to you. And in return, you can bring them a lot of business. Uh, and in many cases, they'll actually offer you a referral fee. It's usually something like one point uh, on the loan. So this is an amazing win-win situation. And you look even better to your buyers because now you can say, we provide funding. And you can include that in like your email blast when you're sending your deals out. Now, here's where most wholesalers get stuck, okay? Not every lender is going to say yes, and that's fine. You cannot let a no stop you. And really, that's true about just about every aspect in this business. If they say no, you know, hey, thanks for your time. Advise you'll be in touch. You know, see how else you can assist them. Ask them if they pay referrals, like whatever. 
and then just call the next lender. And I know these types of cold calls can be uncomfortable, especially if you're a new wholesaler, but I can guarantee you that if you call 10 lenders, one of them is going to say yes. And the problem is most new wholesalers simply won't do that. They quit at the first no or the first you know, feeling of discomfort. And I can't tell you how many times I'll give someone advice on, you know, to do something, whether it's making offers, making cold calls, or doing an exercise like this, and they tell me it doesn't work. And so my next question is always, how many did you make? And sure enough, they come back with something like five offers, 10 phone calls, and they're just not hitting the volume necessary to make this work. And then again, they just quit after a little bit of discouragement. You just have to keep going. Uh, If you're easily discouraged to the point where you stop taking action after a little bit of rejection, you just have to thicken your skin and build up that tolerance. Otherwise, this business is just not for you. A side note, I have all my students listen to this audio book. It's available on Audible called Rejection Proof. Uh, It's an experiment by an entrepreneur who was so scared of rejection that he created this experiment where he purposefully got rejected every single day and he documented his journey to desensitize himself from rejection and just get comfortable asking for things. Uh, So it's a really great book, highly recommended. If that's something you struggle with, I'll put some info down in the description. Now, if you're still with me here, I've given you my recommendations, but if you leave this video now, you're going to miss out on what may be the most important part of the video. And that's how to use these letters properly and how to increase your conversion slash acceptance rates. So look, now that I'm established, like, you know, I've been doing this business for the last decade. I actually send a copy of my bank statement along with the vast majority of properties I make offers on because I'm in a place now where I can show funds. When I first started, man, I was strictly using proof of funds letters. And I would typically send the offer first and not send an accompanying proof of funds letter immediately. And yes, there are exceptions to this, which I'll explain in just a moment. But here's the reasons why, okay? So some of the reasons, number one, like I mentioned earlier, when dealing directly with sellers, if they're truly motivated and you're offering cash, they'll, they're typically, they'll move forward without making that request. Um, And then sending that type of proof of funds letter, you know, showing a loan again, can oftentimes just confuse them. Uh, Reason number two, sometimes sellers or even realtors won't ask for a proof of funds letters and you'll just get, you'll kind of luck out. Sometimes they're just eager to move forward or it's just an oversight. Um, But, you know, it does happen. And then the third reason why I don't always recommend sending your proof of funds letter with the offer, particularly if it's one of the free, you know, more generic ones, is this. Um, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but when dealing with a knowledgeable seller or realtor, some of these letters, especially if they've seen them before, can make your offer look less legitimate in their eyes, maybe even kind of scammy. And if they see your proof of funds letter first, they may not give much credibility to your offer And again, this is in some cases, Um, but if you send the offer first and then you have an opportunity to talk to the seller or the agent, they'll look at what you're offering first without a reason to be skeptical. You know, you have an opportunity to really sell your offer and the benefits, you know, fast closing, cash, et cetera. You have some time to build some rapport. You can build up some investment from the seller side. You know, you kind of get them excited and enthusiastic, you know, fast offer, full commissions, whatever it is. And once they're warmed up a little bit, then you can send the letter over as kind of a supplemental request. Like if you didn't know who I was and I send you an email saying, you know, make 50K in five months, you might be skeptical because you've seen scam emails with that type of language. But you know, if I emailed you a video and explained my process, showed you how it worked, showed you some HUD statements some wire transfers first, and then made the same claim, you'd be more likely to engage with me, right? Uh, Again, not a perfect analogy, but, you know, hopefully kind of get the idea of what I mean here. So on to the next point. Um, Okay, Uh, you have to understand that there isn't a universal standard of what constitutes an acceptable proof of funds. So typically, that's at the discretion of the seller, you know, the person handling the sale, uh, maybe a real estate agent or an asset manager. Um, And as a side note, in the case of things like REOs or short sales, each bank slash, you know, like asset managers, they have different criteria as to what they're willing to accept. And the reality is that using some of these letters will often be harder to get accepted when you're attempting to do deals like short sales or, you know, bank owned property. Um, but with those exceptions, the proof of funds letter is just to verify that you can close. And the degree to which your letter will be scrutinized is oftentimes directly correlated with kind of the confidence that an agent or a seller has with you. 
And a large majority of that is simply based on your communication skills. So here's what I mean when I say that. If you talk to an agent, for example, and you're very hesitant, tentative, kind of nervous, and it's, it's clear that you don't really know what you're doing, you're going to set off red flags, even on a subconscious level, that's going to make them screen you a little bit harder and maybe in a more strict way. Now, conversely, if you speak in a way that demonstrates competency, certainty, and experience, they're much more likely to accept what you're selling. So this is a great time to kind of act as it. So imagine you had a million dollars in your bank account, or you were like a huge real estate investor, like a Donald Trump or Robert Kiyosaki, Than Merrill, someone like that. And someone's asking you to prove that you have $100,000. How would you act? Like it's no big deal. Like it should be obvious to them, uh, a little insulting almost to the point where you, you kind of scoff, or maybe it's even comical. Like obviously don't be confrontational in any way, but you want to try to embody that mindset and really posture in such a way that you demonstrate that level of competency and kind of that attitude. Now, another great way to do this is through language. So within every industry and subculture, there are words and phrases and slang and language patterns that are utilized by people in that circle. So as an example, what, you know, whether I'm communicating via phone or text or email, I'll use abbreviations and insider language. So rather than saying, I'll send you my highest offer with the best terms, I'll say, I'll send H and B by the end of the day. And by using that type of coded language, the subcommunication is that I've done this before. It's that I have experience. So think about it. If you're a bartender and someone asks you for something sweet with vodka, contrast that with the person who orders a gray goose gimlet on the rock. You would assume the person ordering with that specificity and using the term on the rocks is likely more experienced in that environment. So your slang, vernacular attitude, your delivery, and the subtle hints you drop should all be congruent with that of an experienced real estate investor. And the best way to cultivate this is, you know, yes, watch these videos, do your research, but ultimately that smoothness, that confidence, that ability to talk the talk, it comes only through repetition. And it might not happen the first time you talk to someone, but you have to get comfortable getting on the phone and communicating you know, with people regularly until you get good at this. So on to our next point. Uh, in most cases, showing proof of funds is not a contingency on your contract, meaning showing a proof of funds letter is not a requirement or condition for making your contract legally binding. So for example, let's say you send a signed offer to a listing agent, they review it, they um, send to the seller for review and call you back and say, hey, you know, send a proof of funds. Well, what you want to do is say, absolutely, no problem. And you, you know, you want to say this very enthusiastically, like it's no big deal, um, even acting like it was just an oversight on your part. And then say, you know, I'm on the road right now, or I'm not in front of my computer at the moment, or, you know, I'm jump about to jump on a flight, like whatever it is that you're doing. And then you say, yeah, sure, I'll send that right over to you today. Um, oh, yeah, and can you just have the seller send me the executed contract so I can get my partner or my GC, meaning general contractor. Again, we're using abbreviations to demonstrate competency. Um, but, you know, I want to get the, ins uh, the inspection scheduled as soon as possible. Now, will this always work? No, absolutely not. Uh, we kind of covered that. But, again, we're trying to increase your percentage of doing deals in very small increments at every stage of the process. And if you've presented yourself and postured in such a way that your seller is confident that you're gonna be moving forward and that you're looking to move forward quickly, again, showing how doing the deal with you is in their best interest, because you, know, you wanna move quickly, they'll oftentimes send you back the executed contract a little bit prematurely because they know the proof of funds is on the way and they'll often be as excited to lock you in as you are to get the contract. Now, at that point, once you have the executed contract, you can send over any proof of funds letter that you want. So let's say, you know, you send over the, the best transaction funding letter, right? And they say, hey, we can't accept this. It doesn't matter because you still have a legally binding contract and the actual letter you use becomes more or less irrelevant. Now, let's say they won't send back the contract prior to you submitting your proof of funds letter. So what you want to do is go ahead and send it over. And if they say, you know, we can't accept this, don't take the first rejection lying down. Instead, you want to respond with, you know, why not? Put the ball in their court. Let them give you a valid reason. And you should be acting kind of shocked or surprised, maybe even almost offended 
but again, not in a confrontational way. And you're just saying, you know, well, we always use proof of funds and it's never been a problem, which also sub communicates that you have experience, that you know what you're doing. And it's even a subtle challenge to them that maybe somehow they're in the wrong or maybe they're not knowledgeable about doing something. And, um, you know, another objection that you might get is that your contract, remember, your offer is contractually, it says cash, but you're showing that you're using a loan. But again, a hard money loan, it's not like an FHA loan. It doesn't have the same requirements, contingencies, approvals, or timelines. And so for our purposes as wholesalers, it functions just like cash. So again, you really want to stick to your guns and insist like, this is cash. The money shows up as cash on the day of closing, and it's never been a problem. And at that point, I'd say maybe like half of the time, they'll concede and move forward after you've kind of, you know, educated them and built up some confidence because a lot of that pushback is more or less just a test. And again, you know, for like the 10th time, this will not always work. Uh, there will be exceptions. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're working a short sale, for example, having an acceptable proof of funds will in fact be a requirement for your contract to be executed. But, you know, if you're facing a lot, of, um, a lot of issues in those types of scenarios, then maybe you just don't want to focus on those types of deals just yet. Remember, the idea is to start where you are with what you have. And kind of on that note, let's talk a little bit more about building up your credibility. And another way to establish yourself as more legit is to recognize that you can use a bank statement in conjunction with a proof of funds letter. The two are not mutually exclusive. So let's say you want to make an offer on a $100,000 property and you have $100 in your bank account. Now you can use the free best transaction funding proof of funds letter. Again, not recommended, but stick with me for the sake of the example. And in that case, you wouldn't want to show your bank account because you ain't got no money in there. <laughs> um, but in that case, you can expect, you know, that letter is going to be rejected on some of the properties you offer on. But you don't need to wait until you have 100 grand in your account to show proof of funds with your bank statement. <clears throat> and here's what I mean. So fast forward a bit. Let's say you get to the point where you've done a deal or even a few deals, and now you have $30,000 in your account. Well, now you can show your bank statement with a liquid 30K in there and still show the best transaction funding letter to cover the balance. But because you've shown that you have some personal funds, aka some skin in the game, you're much more likely to get your offer accepted. So that conversion percentage rate goes up. Again, just always trying to increase your chances of getting your offers accepted, like one percentage point at a time. So you will face a good deal of rejection, especially in the beginning, but you just got to stick with it, man. Like too many people, they just quit way too early and at the first sign of rejection. Like most of my students that come into my coaching program, they're not even making six figures a year yet. So let's say you made 500 offers a month and 499 of them got rejected, but just one was accepted and flipped each month that would easily put you in that six figure income earning bracket. So it's just a question if you're willing to have a little bit of faith and push through. And again, once you have a few deals done and some money in your pocket, this all becomes a lot easier, more conversions and less rejection. So let me know down below in the comments what follow-up questions you guys have uh, on this topic. What wholesaling questions do you have in general? What topic should I cover in my next video? Um, as you guys know, I'm always looking for new topics to cover and I welcome your feedback and suggestions. And on that note, I do want to encourage you one more time to register for that free consultation phone call. We'll take a look at your business, what you're doing on the call. I'll show you where you're making mistakes and I'll give you some advice and strategies on how to do your next deal. You'll make at least $10,000 or more in as little as four to six weeks. Again, no cash credit needed. And don't be shy, pretty easy to talk to. Um, I absolutely love connecting with my audience to our community. These are pure value calls and it's actually where I get a lot of inspiration for these videos. And literally in like an hour, I can probably save you like six months of spinning your wheels or pursuing ineffective strategies. And that's, that's really not an exaggeration. Like as a matter of fact, if anyone watching this has been on any of those calls, please leave some feedback on your experience down in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I've only had positive feedback from these calls. The only catch is that spots are limited to a few each week. So if you want to reserve a time, click the link in the description below for more information and jump on it ASAP. Uh, until then, please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Turn on the bell notifications. It really helps the channel out a great deal. And I really, really appreciate it. Looking forward to reading and responding to your comments. So until then, keep crushing, keep 
taking action. Stay blessed, and I will see you guys on the next video.